Okay, we got ourselves another video. All right, let's go with another video here. And we got Jason Gutter Trash talking to the cops. We've all, we've all wanted them for a while. Um, it's coming down the road for us and stuff. Okay. Well, I'll cross my fingers for you because I think you should have them too. Yep. There's been plenty of incidents where it would have helped me. Absolutely. And plenty of incidents where I'll help out. Objective witness that never lies, right? Absolutely. That's it, buddy. Do you Appreciate have a YouTube you. channel? Sorry? Do you have a YouTube channel? Do I have a YouTube channel? No. no. I don't. No? I didn't know. Okay. Uh, Jason Gutter Trash is once again a liar. But his followers think he's Jesus Christ. And a lot of people say, well, why would they follow such a jackass? Well, remember, Charles Manson, he too claimed to be Jesus. Okay? Just like Jason Gutter Trash. And people followed both of them. Okay? So they both have their followers. Okay, here we have another situation. Which contains rules for conduct on postal property as provided in section 232.1 of Title 39 of the Code of Federal Regulations. The rules and regulations contained in Poster 7 apply to all real property under the charge and control of the U.S. Postal Service, to all tenant agencies, and to all persons entering in or on such property. And they must be kept posted at a conspicuous place on all such property. According to the Postal Service's website, the general policy for photography and filming on Postal Service premises is found in subsection I of Poster 7 and section 124.58 of the Postal Operations Manual, both of which state that, quote, photographs for news purposes may be taken in entrances, lobbies, foyers, corridors, or auditoriums when used for public meetings, except where prohibited by official signs or security force personnel or other authorized personnel or a federal court order or rule. Other photographs may be taken only with the permission of the local postmaster or installation head. The Postal Service's website further clarifies the policies for filming in a post office, stating that, quote, all requests from qualified news reporting services to film or photograph on postal service premises must be referred to the local public affairs and communications representative. Informal snapshots from handheld cameras for personal use may be allowed at the postmaster's discretion, provided that there is no disruption to postal service operations and that the pictures are taken from areas accessible to the public. In these cases, no prior permission is required from the Office of Rights and Permissions. However, no lighting or scaffolding may be set up and no picture can depict any Postal Service employee, customer, security camera, or cover of mail, i.e. the exterior of a mail piece, which would show customer name and address, among other things. Postmasters may restrict any and all photography if they determine that it is disruptive or there are potential security concerns. I should, you know what, the police are here, and I think I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to go where the police are, because I've asked you already to leave me alone, and you haven't, and that's harassment. Okay, so this guy is in an area where he shouldn't be. One thing, the um, commerce area where you do the mail and everything, uh, they call it a lobby, but technically it is not a lobby. It's a commercial area, and it's not covered in Poster 7 as a place where you can film. Okay. Or rather, questions regarding recording laws in public. So, the main claim is you cannot be removed from a public government building if you are recording. It is public. Meaning you can perform any First Amendment protected activity you want legally. Plus, it is your building. You paid for it with your taxes. That is wrong. You do not own it in the sense of being able to use the property when and how you want. Like you would with any normal property. Especially when it comes to post offices, which happens a lot and is a target of many activists. The post office, while being a government entity, does not operate using tax money, but instead is a profitable company that earns its operational costs through charging for products and services such as stamps, shipping fees, mailbox rentals, and etc. Anyone claiming they pay taxes and therefore own the post office does not understand how the post office works. With that out of the way, on to the rest of government assets. You do not own the courthouse, city hall, DMV, or etc. Governments are, for the most part, and especially on the federal level, incorporated, meaning they own themselves and take responsibility for themselves. The government itself is considered its own entity in the eyes of the law. Individuals that work for them or are in charge of making decisions are not 
held personally responsible for the corporation. You essentially own a share, just like when you buy stock. This isn't exactly how it works. The reality is highly confusing and a bit painful, but this is the best way I found to explain it. So, maybe it will resonate a bit better. You pay your taxes, you then contribute to and have a share of the government, just like if you bought a share of Apple stock. You can't then just waltz into Apple's headquarters because you own a share of Apple, nor can you just up and go make ice cream whenever you feel like it because you own a share in Ben & Jerry's. It's the same concept. Okay, so back to being allowed to legally record in a government building. Yes, you can, and you will never be removed from a building simply because you are recording. However, that doesn't mean you won't be removed for other reasons. First of all, let's discuss what is and isn't public. A government building is not public. They are instead limited public forums, which means they can have restrictions imposed. The issue with others recording in government buildings is not the recording itself, but rather the issues you cause with other patrons and employees when recording them for many reasons. You might want to say you're in public, you have to deal with it, but the courts disagree. Though not for the reasons you think. It has nothing to do with your privacy or someone not being able to film you. Before jumping in, we need to understand how laws are set because most laws, when read, are incredibly vague and really make no sense. And this is where auditors get confused or intentionally misdirect people. Law is interpreted by prior rulings. Once a case has been tried, pretty much all cases that follow the same law will be ruled the same way. This is why the U.S. Supreme Court has such an impact on U.S. law. They can actually step in and change established rulings. So, with that said, let's look at established rulings in terms of recording in government buildings and see what the established rulings say. This actually covers two cases, Smith v. Cummings and then Sheets v. City of Punta Gorda, which reaffirms the Cummings ruling and then applies it to Sheets exactly how I just explained that courts make decisions. The 11th Circuit Court has held, in the case Smith v. Cumming, in involving video recording on public streets that the First Amendment protects the right to gather information about what public officials do on public property, and specifically, a right to record matters of public interest. But public streets are traditional public fora in which First Amendment rights are generally quite broad. The insides of government buildings are generally non-public fora, where speech can be restricted so long as the restriction is reasonable and viewpoint neutral. In Sheets, the court concluded that the same principle applies to video recording and decided that a ban on such video recording of people in City Hall without those people's consent was indeed Reasonable. The government, like any private landowner, may preserve the property under its control for use to which it is lawfully dedicated. Likewise, a government workplace, like any place of employment, exists to accomplish the business of the employer. It follows that the government has the right to exercise control over access to the government workplace in order to avoid interruptions to the performance of the duties of its employees. Based on the preliminary injunction record, the ordinance places responsible restrictions on recording at City Hall given its purpose and contest. The purpose of City Hall is to conduct legitimate public business, and the ordinance restricts recording within City Hall without the consent of those being recorded. Exempted from this prohibition are public meetings and law enforcement activities. If someone violates the ordinance and refuses to stop recording, the City considers that person a disruption of city business. So, that was fairly clear, but if not, let's put it into simple terms. You can do what you want until you disrupt the business being conducted in the government building, whether it be through your own direct fault or through upsetting other patrons or employees, at which point you can be legally removed, even if you are performing a protected right. A government building is a work environment, and if you disrupt the work environment, you go bye-bye. It is simple. 
You aren't being removed for recording. You are being removed for causing a disturbance. Even if the patrons are the ones being vocal, you are still the ultimate cause. Which means, again, bye bye You are free to disagree all you want, but the precedent through case law has now been set. Which means, all cases like this will follow the same ruling, unless you have new evidence, which is very unlikely. Or, you happen to find a court that has a very different viewpoint from a prior court, which I don't personally agree with, but oh well. Instead of using the courts to change the way the law is ruled, most mass surveillance advocates go the bully route. You let me record what I want or else I will cause a scene and have my followers spam the phones, make death threats, and ultimately shut down the city's communications. Maybe even make some of the staff resign out of fear for their lives. This doesn't sound like the actions of an American trying to preserve rights, now does it? it sounds more like a dictator or something that would happen in Russia. The Sheets ruling also looked at this. According to the city's affidavits, prior unconsented recording created disruptions for employees conducting city business. Videos of several city employees circulated on the internet, leading to death threats, suspicious packages in the mail, and so many threatening calls that the city had to shut down its phone lines, including emergency lines. To which the court responded, The government need not wait until havoc is wreaked on its workplace to restrict access to a non-public forum. As the Supreme Court noted, restrictions on limited public forums need not be the most reasonable or only reasonable limitation to survive a legal challenge. So, the part about being allowed to do what you want until you cause a disruption has been nulled out by the same people claiming to be protecting rights. The actions they took has resulted in a ruling that people with cameras can be banned even before you actually cause a disturbance. If anything, the auditors hurt their own movement and have made it harder for normal people with no ill intentions to record out of fear that they will do the same thing. And the courts agree. So, thank you, protector of rights, for getting my rights even more restricted. CCTV and security. Sheets also asserts the ordinance is unreasonable because City Hall has surveillance cameras, so the city is disrupting business with unconsented recording. Yet the ordinance exempts law enforcement activities, and again, it isn't the video recording that is getting the mass surveillance advocate removed. It is the disruption and service they are causing. The CCTV isn't doing that, else it would be subject to the same issues. What crime did I commit? I see this a lot. You can't detain me unless you witness me commit a crime. You have to charge me with a crime to hold me. No. You can be detained for investigation of a crime in order to determine if a crime has been committed. Police need to have reasonable, articulable suspicion, not just suspicion, in order to hold you. Basically, they have to be able to articulate the reason they felt you were suspicious. Yet. Yeah. Many mass surveillance advocates don't seem to understand what articulable actually means. So, let's clear it up. It is quite simple. Let's see some examples of articulable. He matches the description of an armed robber from earlier in the day. He's carrying a rifle case with something rigid inside that could very well be a rifle, which in this situation would be a violation of the law. He is hiding behind vehicles and in bushes as if he is trying not to be spotted. So I just articulated several suspicious things. Now, non-articulable examples would be something like, I just feel like he's up to something. He looks like an evil person. He strikes me as a suspicious individual. You are unable to clearly articulate the exact reason why he is suspicious. This prevents police from simply having a hunch or a bad feeling about someone as the only grounds of suspicion. As long as an officer can articulate reasonable cause of suspicious activity, you can be detained and investigated. You do not need to have been seen committing a crime or even be charged with a crime. Now, to one last big claim from activists. Poster 7. The Postal Service Conduct on Postal Property. 
is used by many activists to claim they are allowed to record in a post office. Except it doesn't say that at all. It actually restricts them. So let's go over it. Photographs for news, advertising, or commercial purposes. Photographs for news purposes may be taken in entrances, lobbies, foyers, corridors, or auditoriums when used for public meetings, except where prohibited by official signs or security force personnel or other authorized personnel or a federal court order or rule. Other photographs may be taken only with the permission of the local postmaster or installation head. Photographs for news purposes may be taken in entrances, lobbies, foyers, quarters, or auditoriums when used for public meetings. If you are filming for a news story and want to get some B-roll footage for your news story, you are good to go. Except where prohibited by official signs or security force personnel or other authorized personnel or a court order or rule. And there it is. All it takes is a sign printed by an employee that says no filming or an employee to say you can't film right now and you are done. If you continue to film even after being told to stop by an employee, they can have you removed and then eventually trespassed. Other photographs may be taken only with the permission of the local postmaster or installation head. If it is not for news purposes, then you have to explicitly get permission from the administrator of the building. A common response is nice try. The problem is that poster 7 is just a poster. It's an explanation of the law, but doesn't have the force of the law. Poster 7 is an explainer of the actual federal regulations at issue. It is a policy, and policy does not trump law. However, as we went over in sheets, policy can be put in place to prevent a disruption in services. Therefore, Poster 7 is legal and outlines what is and is not allowed to prevent disruption in service. So, there we have it. Hopefully this clarified things a bit or not. Again, they're my own interpretations. Am I just a police officer lover, a commie, a tyrant, as many authors are sure to claim? I don't believe so. I'm simply laying out what the law states from the info I'm able to gather. If you don't agree with that, then challenge the rulings in the court of law. Until then, we have to follow the law, even if we don't like it or agree that it is unlawful. Okay, so uh, basically... Um the takeaway here is, uh, well, it's pretty clear. It's pretty self-evident. Let me just say this. Uh, there is what's called public property. There is private property. And then there is government property. And that's something you will learn your first few days in law school. Okay? And the other thing, and a lot of people are going to get mad at me for saying this, but Jason Gutter Trash is not Jesus. Although he may claim to be, just like Charles Manson, I know his followers or haters are going to be sending me a lot of hate mail, but the fact is, it doesn't change the fact that he is not Jesus. So, uh, you can take that in your pipe and smoke it.